Come on, Dr. Meyer, here's the toucan. Jason, I didn't say toucan, I said you can. Oh. Hi, I'm Sean Shirley, flight nurse at AirLink for Regional West Medical Center. And I'm Clint Dunker, flight paramedic for AirLink. Today we'd like to demonstrate for you the proper indications, sizing, and insertion of a nasal and oral pharyngeal airway. Clint, flip me the bird. This is a UCAN Toucan presentation. An oral pharyngeal airway, or OPA, is placed in order to restore patency of a patient's airway that has become obstructed by the tongue or an unresponsive or apneic patient that requires manual ventilation. Oral airways are made of hard plastic and have a semicircular design that conforms to the curvature of the tongue and palate. When properly inserted, the OPA will hold the tongue away from the posterior pharynx and allow air to pass through and around the device. Indications for the use of an OPA an unconscious or semi-conscious patient without a gag reflex who cannot protect their airway and may require manual ventilation, and a bite block to protect the endotracheal tube after intubation. Contraindications for the OPA are patients that have an intact gag reflex. Sizing of the OPA. OPAs come in a variety of sizes to fit almost every patient. The important thing to remember is to know how to properly size an OPA for optimum fit. Place the adjunct on the patient's cheek with the phalange parallel to the corner of the mouth, which is generally equivalent to the lateral incisors. The tip should extend to the earlobe for a proper fit. If the OPA is too small, it will not hold the tongue forward and may possibly push the tongue farther back into the airway. If it is too long, it may block the glottic opening or cause trauma to the airway. Placement of the OPA. First, open the patient's mouth manually. The OPA can be inserted one of three ways, upside down with the curve towards the tongue, at a 90 degree angle with the curve towards the tongue, or in its normal position. With the first two techniques, insert the OPA until it reaches the back of the tongue and rotate either 90 or 180 degrees to place the OPA in its normal position. With the third technique, hold the tongue forward with the tongue blade, hold open the airway in its normal position with the tip facing downward and insert the OPA by gently sliding it over the tongue and into position. Remembering the flange will rest on the outside of the lips. A pearl to remember is that if a patient accepts an OPA, you should prepare for advanced airway management such as intratracheal intubation, an LMA, a king tube or a combi tube, or requesting an intercept from an ALS provider. Nasal pharyngeal airways, also known as trumpets, are inserted through one nostril to create an air passage between the nose and the nasal pharynx. MPAs are preferred over OPAs in conscious patients because it is better tolerated and less likely to induce a gag reflex. Advantages to MPAs, rapid insertion, bypasses the tongue, may be used in presence of a gag reflex, can be used when the patient has suffered injury to the oral cavity, used also when patient's teeth are clenched can be used for lightly sedated or diabetic patients that only need assistance with maintaining airway but have an intact gag reflex. Disadvantages, smaller than an OPA, does not, re, does not isolate the trachea, may be difficult to suction through, may cause severe nosebleeds if inserted too forcefully, contraindicated if the patient is a child or is on anticoagulation, may cause pressure necrosis of the nasal mucosa, may kink or clog obstructing the airway, difficult to insert if there is nasal damage present, new or old, cannot be used if there is suspected facial trauma, basal or skull fracture, head or neck trauma, battle sign or CSF drainage from ears. Sizing of the MPA, using the largest size that will fit the patient's nostril, select correct length, which is in there to the tip of the earlobe. Upon insertion, if there is no history of trauma, hyperextend the patient's head and neck. Assure or maintain effective ventilatory function. If indicated, hyperventilate the patient with 100% oxygen. Lubricate the exterior of the tube with water-soluble gel to prevent trauma during insertion. Push up on the tip of the nose and pass tube into the right nostril with the bevel facing the nasal septum. Direct posteriorly and slightly rotate toward ear. Flange rests against the nostril. 
may use the left nostril if the MPA is impassable via the right nostril. Verify appropriate position of the airway. Breast sounds and chest rise indicate correct placement. Also, feel for airflow at the flange on expiration. Hyperventilate the patient with 100% oxygen if indicated.